what's going on guys? My name is Tommy, welcome back to the channel, and well, I guess I always say it, may as well keep saying it here, happy Friday! We are here today for another episode of Factions of Galarian. Today, Mr. Setho Shinji would like to hear my take on, honestly, the first, quote-unquote, official guild in the Pathfinder universe to which I was exposed, the Red Mantis Assassins. If you guys are liking what you're seeing, like, subscribe, ding the bell. If you have a request, throw it in the comments today. This episode of Factions of Galarian was brought to you in part by Tim Bartlett. Thanks for your help, man. Now, let's hit it. So, as one might suspect of a guild of shadowy assassins, none outside of that shadowy guild of assassins knows when the guild was founded. It's a logical conclusion that they operated in secrecy for many, many years, if not centuries, in the shadows of a city in Rachadum called Azir. There, the Red Mantis venerated their own god, a Chekak. Kind of surprised he hasn't come down on Wednesday afternoon worship, not gonna lie, through the act of merciless contract killings in the Deific Assassin's honor. More than 2100 years ago, if we track Galarian's history from where we are now, the Oath Wars in Rahadum came to an end with the rise of the Laws of Man, which outlawed all worship of all gods forever in the region. And if you'd like to learn more about Rahadum, follow this card right up here. And a lot of people assumed that the Red Mantis were eradicated during this time. But in truth, they quietly escaped to Mediagalti Island. Again, here's another card, learn all about the history of the Inner Sea region, right up here, where over the centuries they constructed a hidden fortress known as the Crimson Citadel, as well as aiding secretly in the growth of Elizmagordi, which is a city port favored by the local pirates. It took 13 centuries after their disappearance from Rahazum for the Red Mantis to return to the scene, and so they did with the assassination of Merivesta Olnichi of Nex, during the premiere of her masterpiece, The Conception Exception, simultaneously debuting their sweet armor and sweeter weapons for which the guild is known. Present day, the Red Mantis continues to hold allegiance to Chekak, their assassination spanning all races, all regions, all religions. However, agents of the Red Mantis always refuse contracts that attempt to solicit services beyond the singular act of killing as well as acts that might target a rightful monarch. Of course, you can hire these guys to aid in your own assassination plots serving as advisors and things, and that is in fact the only way, if you'd like to kill the king, that you can get the Red Mantis involved. In exchange, the price they extract varies kinda just as much as their victims do. Sometimes a pan full of coins will do, sometimes the entire fortune of a merchant, or, you know, could just be a favor the Red Mantis could call in whenever it is they so choose. Now, this is one of the most prolific in terms of prestige classes and things that we can get up to in Pathfinder as far as the guilds go, because everybody needs that sweet assassin guild in their games, right? We've already seen in Wednesday Afternoon Worship how much the Paizo devs love Assassin's Creed, Tenchu, Ninja Gaiden, games like that with their lore for Norgeber, and you know, follow this card right up here. Man, we're racking them up today! If you'd like to learn more about their god of assassins, the Red Mantis kind of falls right in line with that. It's like the Dark Brotherhood, except they wear bright red mantis suits, which has its own role in the whole, like, assassination trope, right? Bright, flashy, bam, you're dead. How do you make them dead? Well, you know. To join the Red Mantis Assassins, we have not one, but two prestige classes as an adventurer's guide and a pair of archetypes. Classically speaking, we have the Red Mantis Assassin prestige class, tacking on some d6s, turning into a literal mantis, getting a very limited amount of transmutation and illusion spells, or if you'd like to specialize in the slaying of undead, the Death Slayer, of course, serves that role nicely with its channel energy. As for specific archetypes, the Crimson Chemist Alchemist gets several unique alchemist discoveries and its own mutagen that are flavored to, you know, do mantis stuff. And the Mantis Zealot Warpriest, which will automatically get you proficiency with their favored weapon, the Sawtooth Saber. That being a one-handed exotic melee weapon, doing 1d8 points of damage, 
19 to 20 times too. Which, if you have the exotic weapon provisions you feet, because I know we're all like, hey, wait a minute, that's literally a longsword. You can treat the Sawtooth Saber as a light melee weapon for the purposes of two-weapon fighting. And we definitely had a lot of those for a while because when I was playing at a local game store a couple hours a week, once a week, when I was a little baby Pathfinder, the GM did in fact throw some Red Mantis assassins at us and I didn't even know what they were. I thought they were just weirdos with funny swords and weird hats. Yes, we killed them. Yes, we took their gear. Yes, we looted it. But the real <gasps> in that encounter came like four months later when I figured out what Reaper miniatures was and had a bunch of disposable income with which to blow on miniatures. Suddenly I see a miniature of that thing we killed, and I guess that was kind of the beginning, you know, of my deep delve into the realm of Pathfinder. Now, it was brought up on a previous video that as we move a little farther forward with our Factions of Galarian video, we should also talk about you, the GM, how you can incorporate the Red Mantis into your own guilds, into your own games, into your own worlds, etc., etc., as well as every other faction we're going to talk about here. The Red Mantis is pretty easy. If you as a GM like playing the ambush your party game, these guys will certainly fit the bill super well. The party could seek them out on a very difficult, like, long-term goal of assassinate somebody. Maybe they just happen to wrong one of the faction's members at some point, and so they get harassed throughout the campaign. The possibilities are kind of endless. Just make sure you bring your gold to pay them off or pay the, somebody much stronger to deal with them, because you have to imagine the Red Mantis Assassin only strikes when he or she knows victory is assured, but what do you guys think about this guild? Have you played a Red Mantis Assassin? Have you fought him? Have you used him in your games? Let me know down in the comments, and thank you guys so much for watching. The next episode of Factions of Galarian drops next Friday.